Hello and welcome to my vlog. I am Sumant Vepa, a developer, a DevOps engineer and an entrepreneur and this is my story. It's uh, Monday morning, October 26th, 2020 and it's the start of a new uh, sprint and a new week. And uh, this week I have a little bit of time. Uh, we were we finished our last project and we are preparing for our big migration project early next year uh, by doing a bunch of benchmarking, doing a bunch of analyses and, uh, and a whole bunch of smaller projects uh, in the meantime. Uh, so um, this week or rather the first half of this week, I thought uh, I'll help mom out with the problem she's having in school. Some time ago, I put out a, a website for her, um, a, a course website for her development economics course. You can check it out at swarnavepa.org. And uh, the semester is coming to an end and she needs to hold quizzes for her students. And essentially, I need to build her a small quiz module that allows her to conduct quizzes online. So that's what I'll be working on. <coughs> for this project, um, essentially, I'll be generating PDFs. So. Um, um, the first part of it. So the online quiz uh, requires also requires a PDF. That's a, that's the requirement of Mom's University. They need a, a PDF version of the quiz so that they can uh, um, they can be uh, downloaded if necessary and done on paper and then scanned and sent back to the university. So that's one of the requirements. So I thought I'd address that first because it seemed that generating PDFs was a little tricky. Uh, I have some rough code, rough and dirty exploratory code that already does this, but um, A, it doesn't align PDFs very well, um, it's very uh, brittle, and it's not very reusable code, and I'd like to incorporate it into a web service that I'll be launching. So the objective today is really to then clean up this, uh, this stuff and let it... Uh, uh, and so that it's easy to use uh, and deploy and also can be reused in uh, in another component. It's 9 a.m. and uh, I've uh, just uh, set up my workplace. It's a Monday morning, so a bunch of uh, cleaning, uh, office cleaning and setup to do. Um, and when you're a small business, uh, you get to do all that stuff yourself. So uh, I'm now ready to get to work and the first order of business is to uh, review the work needed to uh, generate uh, PDFs uh, and see what it takes and then basically work out a plan for the day and uh, then get to the uh, get to actually implementing it. I'm trying out something new in terms of planning uh, uh, today. I want to get a much better uh, handle on the estimates I make about programming work. So what I'm doing today is uh, estimating in great detail what I will actually be doing and then measuring uh, how uh, long each task takes against my estimate and then uh, uh, blogging that I will be uh, uh, logging those that deep data for a couple of weeks just to understand uh, how our estimation process is going not just for myself but also for my team um, because I've been finding lately that we've been missing estimates uh, by a large margin and uh, I think it's not because we've not been working hard, it's just that uh, we've been uh, uh, being very optimistic about our estimates. And so I think we need a more scientific process for our estimation. And uh, one of the things I'm going to do is actually track, our, track, my, uh, track my work first and then those of my developers and then see um, where we're going wrong. Okay, so based on uh, what I said this morning, I thought I made a a detailed estimate of my uh, project for today, which is to generate PDFs, is just really a way to test out uh, this uh, method of making estimates. So what I did was I described the, the task in great detail uh, and broke it down into, into substantial detail so that uh, I, could, uh, uh, I could estimate each task individually and uh, see how long it takes to, to complete, the ta uh, complete this uh, project. Um, along with each uh, task, I put out a status, the time I actually uh, estimated that it would take to complete, the actual time to complete, the estimated start time, the actual start time, the completion time, and the actual completion time, and notes about what actually happened. And uh, a color coding scheme that basically goes orange for um, the task exceeded the estimate and the green when the task is uh, 
either equal to or better than the estimate. Uh, so far, it's been uh, it's been odd actually. Uh, so the t the one task that I'm actually working on for the last three hours isn't uh, so uh, the one that um, is on this list, and that's because an unexpected thing came up, and um, essentially our uh, our building manager told us that um, power is going to go off out uh, go off for the uh, uh, for the rest of the afternoon, and they're going to have to shut down the uh, the generators uh, in order to do some maintenance on them and so um, we'll be entirely reliant on our UPS. My UPS lasts about uh, four hours so it was not an issue but I do have to reduce the load on it to ensure that I can continue working and one of the things I had, one had, one had to do was power off uh, one of our development servers, the one that I was doing work on. Uh, so I thought I'll move that work onto my uh, laptop and continue working there. Uh, and ran into a problem. So the virtual machine that I'm using, uh, I'm not able to mount um, an NFS uh, mount from uh, Catalina, Mac OS Catalina onto a VM running Linux. It turns out Catalina has changed the way things are done on, uh, on NFS and it no longer works. And uh, so I've been uh, struggling with this problem for the last two and a half hours, cursing Apple and Mac OS Catalina. But nevertheless, that's the problem I've been solving. It's not there on this list. And so this is one of the reasons why estimates just go out of whack. Um, these are not tasks you prepare for. This is unexpected. So um, I'm wondering, I'm going to add this to the task list. Now, clearly, this is not something that will get repeated in a different task list. But nevertheless, it should be uh, something that should be predicted and planned for. So that should I need to switch work from a server onto a laptop, I should be able to do it quickly. So I'm doing that now. I'm debugging. Uh, the thing and then I'll get back to my scheduled tasks. Oh, it's uh, 10 p.m. and I finally figured out how to fix the mount problems on macOS Catalina uh, mounting NFS. Uh, I initially tried mounting it in NFS, had no success uh, and uh, then tried to mount a CIFS Samba file system from uh, um, that will from the Export these. I export the file system on the Mac OS machine uh, as a Samba for a Samba file system to the VM on Linux. That worked, but uh, sim links were sort of broken, and uh, more importantly, Git simply didn't uh, understand uh, what was going on and it gave completely erroneous results. So um, at that point, I gave up on uh, mounting uh, CIFS and went back to NFS. Fortunately, uh, some more research on the web um, uh, helped me find a solution. Essentially, it was to enable the NFS daemon to uh, get full disk access in the security and privacy settings on macOS Catalina. Boy, it, was a, it took a long time to find this solution. Uh, that worked. Um, I needed a few more changes to mount options. Uh, I had to mount uh, the NFS file system using TCP um, and uh, specify that all uh, user access was mapped to a specific user. That was okay since uh, my VM is used exclusively by me. And uh, anyway, uh, solved the problem finally. It took nearly 10 hours of work to figure it out. Uh, with some breaks in between. Uh, so my estimate has been shot to pieces. Um, I just simply didn't plan for this sort of thing. It was triggered by a power outage uh, and the need to move off of uh, a server onto my laptop. As a postmortem, I think um, in future I must have multiple workflows uh, set up. Uh, one for uh, working on my Mac laptop, one for a Windows laptop and one for a uh, for working in, in the office on our server so that I can easily switch from one workflow to the other should I have to. Uh, it need not always be a power outage. It could just be that uh, I just want to work from my laptop or I'm traveling or I, again, for any other re for, for any number of reasons. It also provides a little bit more uh, robustness in terms of how I do my development and debugs my workflow. So that's my update for today. Uh, I was hoping to complete the whole PDF generation suite, but um, actually couldn't do it. So I'm going to just focus on uh, documenting the uh, the uh, 
steps I took to mount a uh, CIFS file system, uh, sorry, and uh, an NFS file system from macOS onto Linux. Uh, usually, most of the instructions are on the web or the other way around. So, mounting a file system that's hosted on a Linux machine um, onto a macOS um, client. Uh, this way, I was going the other way around. Um, actually, I found a solution in the very vagrant community, um, which I, I would expect would have the same issues. So that's what I did. And uh, so now uh, I'm going to spend some time documenting it and then uh, calling it a day.